Hi, and thanks for coming back to the series where I talk about demand planning in Dynamics 365. In the previous episode, I showed how to transform raw demand data into weekly historical demand. In this episode, I take this demand and use a forecast algorithm to create a demand forecast. My name is Henrik Marks Larsen, and I'm a principal consultant with Scales, a Danish Microsoft systems integrator. I work with Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations and its predecessors for more than 25 years across many industries and geographies. Since the demand planning application is fairly comprehensive, I've decided to divide my tutorial into seven episodes, each dealing with an important aspect of the application. In episode one, I introduce the key capabilities of the application and explain what an end-to-end -end demand planning process looks like. In episode two, we look at how we can import data from Dynamics 365, supply chain management, and other sources. Often, we need to transform the demand data we have imported into a more appropriate format for demand planning. We look at how transformation is performed in episode three. Episode four is all about forecasting and how we can apply forecasting models to our historical demand. Sometimes uh, we would like to post-process the demand plan created by forecasting. We look at how this can be done in episode five. Reviewing and adjusting the demand plan is the topic for episode six, and we close the series with episode seven, where we export the demand plan back to Dynamics 365 Supply Chain Management. We have now come to the stage in the process where we calculate the forecast using forecast profiles. Firstly, we take a look at the different forecasting algorithms available in Dynamics 365 demand planning. Next, we look at how to create a new forecast profile. And lastly, we look at how we can modify the forecast model flow within the profile after creation. In Dynamics 365 demand planning, three inbuilt forecasting algorithms are available. As you can see, each serves a slightly different purpose in terms of stability of demand, seasonality, and outlier removal. They are all described in more detail in the application documentation. It is also possible to develop your own algorithm through Azure Machine Learning Studio and use it in the application. Lastly, there is best fit this is actually not an algorithm, but a post-processing option that compares the results of the applied algorithms and selects the best fit result. So here is the use case I will use to show how forecasting profiles work. I will leave you to read for a moment. In this episode, we will only deal with the forecast calculation and leave the review and adjustment for the next episode. From the forecast profiles menu point, I open a list of the forecast profiles I've configured. As you can see, I've created two forecast profiles, each using a different algorithm. I've created two profiles because I want to see how the results compare. We will look more at how to compare forecasting results in episode six. For now, let's look at how we create a new forecast profile. From the ribbon, I select New to create a new profile.
I start by giving the profile a meaningful name. Next, I select the quantity precision I want for the resulting forecast rows. In this step, I need to select the input historical demand for my forecast profile. I select the historical demand we imported from Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations in Episode 2 and transformed in Episode 3. Please note that you can select more than one input source for the forecast profile. Remember to click on Include Data Source before moving to the next step. Next, we need to select the forecasting algorithm we want to use for the profile. In this case, I select the STL plus ETS algorithm. I can leave this selection blank and define it later on the profile. I can set up a recurring schedule to refresh the forecast profile periodically in this step. But for this example, I choose none to execute the job manually. Now we come to the last step in the creation process, where I can review and complete the profile. This is the forecast flow for the profile we have just created. In step one, the forecast model loads historical demand data. In step two, seasonal variation outliers are removed using the STL method. In step three, the forecasting is generated using the ETS algorithm. In step four, the result is saved. I can change the forecast model to suit my requirement by adding new steps or changing the sequence. In this example, I've added a step after the demand data load where I remove outliers using interquartile range or IQR to remove outliers from my input data. The IQR calculation removes input values that fall into quartile 1 and 3, and you can range, use the range multiplier to broaden the quartiles. The forecast profile configuration is now complete. I can run it to generate the forecast. We have now come to the end of this short demonstration of how to create forecast profiles in Dynamics 365 demand planning. In the next episode, we look at how you can apply additional calculations to the forecast. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.